What's up, everybody? Jason here for jazbeescasebreaks.com. 2022 Bowman Baseball Hobby 12 box case break random divisions number three just sold out. Remember, all card ship, six spots, six random divisions we uh, do it here. And again, guys, we'll randomize customer names and divisions. You get a random division. And uh, we got one autograph per box. So at least 12 will be popping off after here. Taylor and Matthew, the only two that got spots straight up. Johnny, Carl, and Brian Croft won those from. Uh, Top Scrum Platinum 3 and 4. There's the divisions there. Here we go, guys. Let's dice roll it. And we got ourselves a 6 and a 3 9 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Brian Croft at the top, Carl at the bottom. Nine times here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. AL West out of the NL West. So Brian Craft with the AL West and the AL Central. Johnny with the NL Central, Taylor with the AL East, Matthew with the NL East, and Carl with the NL West. Now if you guys do want to trade, I'll give you guys a quick trade window. Um, if not, I'm going to pop up in some boxes and we'll close it if that's the case. Let me turn on the top camera. I'll rip open one box for now, and then we'll close the trade window after that if nobody wants to trade. And I'll most likely rip six boxes at a time. To get through it, and then we'll rip the next six after that. All right, TWC guys.
Alright, so I ripped the first box, let me go with the next box, and I guess I'm gonna rip pretty much seven straight, or six straight, and then we'll go through the cards, and then we'll go with the next six. So it should be about like ten minutes of ripping box boxes, and then we'll get to the cards after that. Alrighty guys, so three boxes down, let me just rip three more, and then we'll uh, go through those hits. So again, after this, the only thing that it sold out is Obsidian Basketball, guys. It's a quick little 10 minute break. So, after that, that's when we're free. Technically, to even do some personals back to back to back if you guys wanted to. Um, and like I said, sell out that next definitive box break.
was a Tatis and Trout duel. Yeah, that would, that would be a crappy randomizer loss. But just to give the opportunity, you still have to have one of those two teams, right? So. It is, G -Lo. It is. It is, a, it is a good amount. That's right. It's nothing I can't handle. For you guys, this is a great time to, uh, you know, step away, go grab a drink, maybe get some food, take a little nap <laughs> if you're not in this break, or enjoy the sweet, sweet sounds of the packs ripping. Because I know it soothes some people. So I'm going to rip these last box here and then we're going to go to the first six boxes. Trust me, Gilo, uh, there's a couple customers on IG that want me to like actually record this for ASMR and upload it to like YouTube. Especially with a product like this. It's great, dude. Today's break. We have a case of bones. Six right there. Here we go. So we'll kind of just skim through it. Wander Franco. Nico Cavetas for Boston. Let's see. 
What is Boston again? The AL East? Yes, AL East. Which is Taylor. Victor for the Pirates or Pirates and Padres, I should say. Jeremy Vargas. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't think I want to support Kroger's no more. So Rex says, found out something crappy about Kroger's, CJ Abrams, is that it's always been after 20 years, you get five weeks of vacation. They have taken the fifth week away, except for anyone who's grandfathered in. So basically, anybody that worked previous to like last year or the years before that, and says, so those of us that Already have five weeks, get to keep it, but imagine being 18 or 19 years old until you won't get that fifth week. Dude, that sucks. Why are they taking it away, those cheap cheapskates? Don't they make enough money already? That's true, unions would never allow that. Do you guys not have a union? I feel like you guys are a big enough company to have unions. Unless Kroger doesn't allow it. So then what's going on then? Why 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 aren't you guys fighting for that? Oh, and you guys just lost. Wow. Yeah, I remember my mom would work for the post office. She, I think they get like five weeks too. But the one thing is that my mom every year would, instead of taking, not, not to say that she didn't take a fifth week off, but it was usually always like one week out of the year like that she would call off, but technically wouldn't really have nothing to do. So she would work like maybe a couple days out of that week. So she'd accumulate every year an extra sixth week, technically, for the following year. Ah, so you guys got paid more wage wise, but took away the took away that took away the fifth week. So that's only basically like you said, only for newbies. I mean, I guess, right? I mean you're getting paid a lot more than what other people probably got paid, right? Olivera. Will Wagner. Yeah, that's true, especially if you're almost there. A roll there. Yeah, I mean, it probably cancels out for Kroger in the long run. It's like, all right, well, we're going to pay him up front a little bit more to start off or whatever, or we're going to give him that extra week. And Randy Vasquez to 250 purple for the Yankees. 
And that's also AL East as well, Taylor. Paper of Odalis Garcia and paper of Francisco Oliveras. Our third box. And another Randy Vasquez to two ninety nine, Jesus. Right, I will too. <laughs> Imagine we actually like we're a, we're like a stock, we go public or something. It'd be like conflicting for most people, right? Just like you're gonna still spend more money in the place you're investing in. I'm talking about Cora that's been in Cora for nearly 40 years? Jesus. Also got watches and rings? Damn. That was a long time ago, though, Rex. That's, that's a lot different, dude. <laughs> Lemmy Sosa. <laughs> that was a pen? Oh man, dude. Not at Jaspies. You get a pen when you get when you get uh when you get hired. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Of six, Justin Morneau. Is that a buyback? That is awesome. Bowman autograph buyback 2022 from 2011. That is awesome. Minnesota Twins. That is, uh, what is that? Part of the AL Central, which is going to Brian Croft. Paper there, Luis Gonzalez. So 
So I assume that's going to be the one autograph, right? Unless they throw in a second bonus on him. Christian Hernandez. I did not, did not. They gave him a bag of junk. Are you an IT G -Lo? That's cool, man. I kind of wish I had like a job like that. You get paid really well. I mean, I guess, right? Depending on where you work. Or if you do your own. Your only freelance work. David Spade gave him a several thousand dollars. What a nice guy David Spade is. He must really love Burger King. I used to love uh, Burger King's original chicken sandwiches. You can be part of the dance to the right price. And well, I wish I could negotiate with you. <laughs> Yeah, they were so wrong about that, Rex, that's for sure. It was Waldo Cabrera. Yankees. Yeah, my brother... That was like some type of IT, my brother-in-law. He, uh, I think his real, like, uh, occupation, I think he's a IT, the telecom, senior, senior telecom, um, engineer, I think. He works for USC Hospital Keck in, in, uh, in downtown. But, uh, he, like, I guess USC is buying up a lot of, 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 um, a lot of hospitals so when they buy them he needs to go program all their stuff you know telecom wise and he's been doing that his whole life basically since he was like 18 whoa Reed Detmers to 25 rookie of the year favorites Well, let me learn. What what is what is what is clouds? I mean, I'm not really into the IT world. Like like the cloud? Like we're talking Apple cloud? <laughs> Mookie? Darren Breaker to 150. Alright, last box here, then we'll go with the next six. Dustin Harris.
Oh, really? Okay, okay, okay. I get that. I get that. The stack has ads you see all the time in baseball. Gotcha. And then, turn on you know, servers. You know. Gotcha. Okay. Well, at the time, Terry, like, is that something you were always interested in? Or was it just like, did you believe that that would be like a great job in the future for sure? And in the long run, you know? Wilman Diaz. So I remember for like my brother-in-law, like he had told me, you know, like he had just went to like a trade like, school kind of deal, like, they tested him on, like, you know, things that he would be good at, potentially, and then, you know, they told him, you should be in telecom, you know, I think you'd be really good at this, blah, 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 problem solving, and this and that, so, did that, and then, like I said, he never left that, that, that business, but I always thought it was a cool job, it's just, it is hard work, though, don't get me wrong, you know, especially when you're out, out on the field, especially, like, you know, up and down ladders, poles, everything like that. But obviously that's a little different, but really that's awesome, dude. Yeah. Well, that's the one thing like for people like our coders and stuff, like I think at one point, like all of us, I know myself included, we all learned how to code through MySpace, right? <laughs> for the, for the, as, as early as we were like kids, but I kind of grew out of it, right? Like I remember another buddy of mine, they used to break a lot here with us back when I did hockey then. He told me like, that's how he got into like, like, you know. Designing websites and coding was like MySpace. He goes, dude, like I was so fascinated th doing it through MySpace. And while well, people stopped doing MySpace and went to Facebook, I kind of just stuck around and continued to do codes and codes and codes. And, you know, it's cool. Like I, I always thought that was awesome. But I kind of just stopped and I didn't really like continue like to learn. Jonathan India. Gotcha. That's good, though, Gila. That's awesome, man. I was in the Navy at the time. I had no idea what I was going to do. Oh, yeah, no. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Good for you guys, man. That's sick. Well, honestly, Rex, I've heard stories of breakers actually doing a type of breaking back in the day before really, like, Breaker TV was even out or anything, like, you know, uploading kind of, like, online streaming softwares. People would actually, people would actually, like, literally get a video camera record and then, like, upload it, you know, rather than, like, live stream, you know. And I mean, breaking has been around for a long time, really. It's just, it's only recently gained popularity. I mean, obviously, breaking started at local card shops, right? That kind of deal. You sell, like, a random deep division, random team, you know, box wars, you know, case wars and stuff like that. But I remember hearing stories of people actually, like, doing this in the sense, like, they sell it. Once they were to sell out, they would record it. And then, like, upload it. Yeah, you had to really trust people really well. Like, really well, Rex. Because <laughs> you were, like... <laughs> a lot of trust back in the day. Yeah, was, was, isn't that the Cards Infinity guy? Yeah, he's like one of the longer ones. But no, I'm serious, yeah. Shit like that, you know. And I mean, I mean, for Nick's sake, like, Nick was a kid, basically, right? When he really started this with his dad. He was watching other breakers do a, do this. And then, um, you know, when it came down to it, when Mike was, like, you know, leaving Tops at the time, 
kind of wanting to like do something else, that's when Nick said, hey man, I, I really think we can get this, we can really try this. I think this is kind of like the future, honestly. The way to sell boxes and cases and, and sure enough, I mean, breaking is the, the real way to kind of move product quicker because right, everybody buys a, a share of, of the box of the case via team, random division, hit, whatever. And you know, not everybody has to pay the full price point of a box or a case. I mean, it was really Nick's vision more than anything. He just needed, obviously, you know, Mike to kind of help out with all the real logistics of everything, you know, and and the investment type, you know. And I'm glad, you know, it's worked out. I mean, like I said, Joe got hired on, like, around October of 2014. I came on, like, early February. So we're really not too far apart. But obviously, they hired Joe to do a breaker where it was me just kind of help out with the shipping and sorting side. Because I, I knew them through a mutual friend. But, yeah, I, I was blown away. I was blown away when I learned this. Because, like I said, I college really wasn't for me. And, and not to say that, like, I I wasn't, like, a smart kid. I, I think I was a pretty smart kid, but I just didn't... I just didn't feel that college would be for me, honestly. So I really just kind of did what my dad told me. If you're not going to go to college, you got to really just find something you like or, you know, do something. And then... Like, 2011 is when I really, really got into the hobby. Like, really got into the hobby. I was, like, getting help from a, my sister's boss at the time, you know. Um, setting up at local card shops, like, at Jimmy's on Sundays. And, you know, kind of helping him sort out through his stuff. Post stuff on eBay. Kind of, that's pretty much what I did for a few years, honestly. And uh, really more hustle than anything. And then, obviously... Like I said, early 2015, got connected with with Mike and Nick and them, and then, you know, I was only supposed to help out for a few weeks, honestly. <laughs> I didn't think of it being down the line like seven, eight years later, but and then, you know, they say, hey, man, would you like to stay? You know, I think, think we can definitely need your help because we're only growing and getting bigger, and sure, and then, you know, they got me to convince me to break, and I didn't want to break for like over a year because I was a little nervous, but they finally grew out of my shell. And then did it, and yeah. So, I mean, it's crazy. Like, obviously, like I said, I wasn't there since the beginning, beginning of it, but pretty early on. Yeah, I mean, that dude stopped for a little bit, but I think he came back. And, you know, good for him. I mean, yeah, we also had a website called 10 Buck Breaks, where every break was $10. <laughs> Those were the days. I mean, you can still do 10 Buck Breaks, but man, it's really not going to be the best products anymore. <laughs> it would be like three boxes of Diamond Kings, like a box of draft picks. It's, it's not, not what it once was. But again, guys, a lot of those cards, though, like, you know, a lot of these products now, although they are going for insane amounts of money per box, the cards that get pulled potentially are getting going for insane amount of money. So, I mean, it's not like it's a total, total, like, loss. Not like the boxes are ridiculously priced and there is no cards that'll make some money back. There still is, for sure. But it's definitely just tougher now. Because, you're, you know, there's not many people only breaking. And now there's hundreds and thousands of breakers, to be honest. Imagine, like, through YouTube. I'm pretty sure people still break on Breakers TV. I'm not even kidding you. They use, like, Ustream. They do Instagram like we do. They'll do whatnot. They'll do, like, all the other apps. Loop and Drip. And uh, there's people all over the place. You know? It's just pretty crazy. The pandemic really just exploded this market. Dude, Breakers TV was such a great idea. It was such a great idea. But the people that ran that website just really did not invest any money. They they had it really good. No, that's what I'm saying though. It's very bad. But when they were when we were breaking on there at first before YouTube, I'm telling you, man, Breakers TV was the shit. Like I loved how there was like a channel bar. You know, the more chatting that you were in the front, like, everything was so good about it because that's all you knew. 
But then they didn't really invest any money into that website. It was always crashing. You know, chatting sucked, everything. And then YouTube just got better. And that's why we switched to YouTube and we stopped breaking there. But that was the place to break if you were a new breaker. Because there was always going to be people with eyes on looking at you because it was like a channel bar. One out's great. One out's a great app, Terry. You know, we, we rolled on whatnot for a little bit. It's just kind of hard because there's so many people breaking there now. And not just breaking, they're selling a ton of different stuff. So it's just a big marketplace. But the one thing though, for a customer, I think it's great. Because honestly, there's people in there that are brand new. You know, obviously just trying to sell a couple boxes, make a couple bucks. And, um, you know, there's times where you're going to get yourself a really, really good deal. But I just feel like... You know, for the sellers that are just trying to make it on there, if you're not established right away, and like I said, there are established breakers on there, people people will really take advantage of you. And obviously, that's your choice, of course, on wanting to sell there. But uh, they only accept certain people to sell. You can apply to sell there. But they try to nitpick on who they want to sell and who they don't. But, uh, I mean, it's a cool app, though. I mean, it's very addicting because it's all auction. And... You don't have to leave the website. You don't have to leave the app to go purchase something. It's purchasing all through the website, but you know, it has its pros and cons. I know Rex, I, I, I want to say that there's still a couple of people that literally still break there that I know of. We did do Twitch for a little bit, Adam, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't do it now, but with t at the time we did Twitch, uh, they did not allow us to break, so we they were always banning us, like, every few weeks. Like, their bots finally caught that we weren't video games, so they would ban us. Now I think Twitch allows breaking on there, but at the time that we were doing it, it wasn't really, it wasn't really working for us because we weren't, like, video gamers. IG's cool. I love IG, actually. I think IG, we've done really, really well. Um, you know, and again, that's another venture that we established early on before the pandemic that really helped. But, um, yeah, I remember <laughs> IG has grown a lot, too, guys. It's crazy. Like, I remember so many people have asked for personals, but it's just so hard to have our channel here and do personals at the same time. It's just too hard, right? So I remember when we wanted to try out IG... You know, there was only like five viewers a day, probably one or two boxes sold. But then as we consistently went on there seven days a week and, you know, you know, I can always have great prices. So obviously, you know, all of us breakers here, you know, are good breakers. So that did definitely help. And then now, of course, IG is a total different story. IG is really, really good for us. And it's just so easy, right? Everybody usually has Instagram already, right? For the most part, right? You're already on there. Most people love to make yourself a card page. I have my own card page, right? Show off your card collection. You can buy, sell on there. And then, you know, it's very convenient. You just pop into the live stream. You can buy something and then get back to your normal life. Not that you can't do that on, on YouTube, but... But, um, you know, I really love IG. It's so easy, too. It's so easy to stream to at a show. I mean, I don't know if you guys remember when I did the Del Mar show, I tried out YouTube on the phone for the first time. I actually wasn't bad. I think it was pretty easy. I kind of liked it a lot, but, you know, obviously, YouTube's a little bit more on the professional side. You know, we have cameras there. We have cameras on the face cam. We have a third camera. We have a nice microphone, you know. But uh, I really did like streaming on YouTube on the phone. It was pretty cool. But yeah, I think Twitch does allow now, but at the time when we were doing it, they weren't allowing it, so we just kind of just gave up on that. And a lot of people really like YouTube. I mean, honestly, YouTube is very crisp. It's clean. You know, something else that a lot of people actually have already downloaded anyways. <clears throat> Alright, guys. Two more boxes, and then we'll go through the cards. But yeah, like I said, there's, there's a lot of breakers everywhere now. You should, Rex. I mean, why not? Why not? I've sold I've sold a couple of cards and bought a couple of cards through Instagram. Obviously, just like anywhere else, just like Facebook and eBay. I mean, obviously, just you know, try to make sure you don't get scammed. But for the most part, I mean, 
there's there's a lot of good honest people trying to sell their cards on Instagram. <clears throat> I recently haven't posted a lot of shit on mine, but during the pandemic, like 2020 and tw early 2021, I was posting a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Yeah, I've met some good customers through Instagram, and like I said, bought and sold through Instagram too. I mean, at the end of the day, G Lo, uh, it, it's it, you don't have to. I don't think I don't think you should take it as like you have to show off. Like whatever card that you love, it doesn't even have to be like an RPA one hundred and one or something. You know, something expensive. I mean, <laughs> I posted a lot of my Miles Sanders cards, and they're not worth that much. Yeah, I I still buy through eBay too, Terry, but I try to avoid eBay. I've 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 acquired a lot of my personal cards through customers that I've met like off eBay, and especially like you guys that I hit for you guys, and I try to make a deal out of it. Um, I rather do that than go to eBay, unless of course I can't find the card and it's really tough. You know, so. But um, obviously eBay is very safe. I try to just help out more. People direct. But yeah, eBay's getting a little greedy. Ah, I <laughs> got you, Gila. That's cool, man. You'll get it. Then you'll be here buying buying out Bowman Breaks. Or, like I said, maybe we give you that job and just pay you in cards. Yeah, the authentication to shit is a little weird. That is... Like, we actually... <laughs> We actually had a card that came in from eBay that <laughs> came in to one of those authentication like sleeves. My wife was like, what is this? Can I open this? I'm like, yes, you can. <laughs> but again, they're only doing that because there's a lot of people that scam in the world. And eBay, of course, is becoming a big place to do that. But yes, um, one time I, I think I heard from one of my Instagram customers that they were selling a card that was real, legit real, and they obviously had to send it into authenticated before, but they didn't pass it. Which, like, the card was, like, from Panini. I don't understand. And then the guy's like, oh, I want my money back. You know, it's just, it didn't pass authentication. It's like, what? But for raw cards, I think, you know, especially potentially some that could be trimmed slash, like, reprints, I guess. Kind of deal, then that does help. Fake autographs, but I mean, I don't know. Like, how can you say that something's not authenticated if it's coming directly from the company? I guess it has its pros and cons, I guess. Although, one time I did help out one of my buddies. He was selling a Steph Curry rookie. Ended up selling for I don't remember how X amount of money and he sent it in for identification and then he realized it was trimmed. And he didn't know it was trimmed, so obviously he refunded the dude back. But then he also got his money back from a previous guy because I don't even think that guy knew it was trimmed when he sold us in. Yeah, I say something like that then I get for sure, but Yeah, I think wording eBay auctions is a big, big thing. You need to make sure you do that right. Yeah, but how, I mean, was it fake though? I don't think it was, right? <laughs> All right, guys, here we go, last six.
Pedro Leon. Alright guys, here we go, continue on. Noel, first for Cleveland. I see an orange coming up, so I don't know if that's an auto or that's just a color, but we'll find out right now. Luis Jill to 25. Wander Franco, rookie of the year favorites. And we got Andre Lara to 150. And that's for the Washington Nationals, which I believe are in the NL, uh, NL East. Yes, NL East. Which is Matthew. Paper, Tristan Casas. Someone purchased a jet on eBay? <laughs> First of all, why the hell are you selling a jet on eBay? I mean, I get eBay has all the eyes, right? But... <laughs> He does, Travis. He's just on vacation, and he wasn't able to make it in today. So, you'll see him soon again. On a little vacay. Polanco. Well, yeah, see, that's the thing. Some people will sell, will fall for those. For sure. To my knowledge, he should be back tomorrow. But if he's not, then he'll be back Sunday for sure. I assume by then. Um, maybe he just took an extra couple days off. Matt Frazier. But, uh, yeah, he does Sunday through Thursday. I know he was going out of town for the long weekend, um, so maybe he just hasn't made it back yet or something. So, I'm sure he's gonna, eh, I'll rest up before the national, so, which is all good. If I'm not covering, then it'll be Chris, obviously, vice versa. Um, but I think, uh, like I said, Chris technically was off today, and then Teddy wasn't able to make it today, so I was just the lone wolf over here. So that's I kind of have to do double duty. But tomorrow, somebody will either, like I said, cover Joe if it's me. If not, I'll be on IG and somebody will cover Joe. Vice versa. Ooh, redemption.
Chrome Prospect autograph of Taylor uh, Whitaker for the Houston Astros. A.L. West, Brian Croft. Our former boxes, guys. Jose Rodriguez. Victor Labarada. Oh, wow. Are the Dodgers playing right now, Terry? Damn. I'm not used to, like, looking up Dodger games anymore because, like, for the longest, when Spectrum wasn't available on DirecTV here in L.A., I didn't really watch it. And then I have YouTube TV at home now, <laughs> and I don't have that channel either, so I kind of just forget that they're actually sometimes playing. And like I said, for me, it's just such a long season. <laughs> That's right. Bottom of the seventh, one nothing Colorado. Base is loaded, 1-1 one, one pitch. Yeah, Bobby, I'm I'm the lone breaker here today. Uh, a couple people were out, so I have been doing personals here on YouTube. I just haven't been able to go live on Instagram, and I probably won't be able to because I am kind of booked until like 10:30. So if you are interested in doing a personal, I can do one. It's just gonna have to break here. So you would pay like you normally would on Jaspies.com, and then uh, if it's a quick, quick break, I, I can just squeeze it in. I can squeeze it in. Uh, in between breaks, whoa, Connor Wong to 150, or to 100, sorry, Atomic. If not, like I said, I'll put you on the, on like the list, and then you'll be after a group break or something like that. But, I don't think I'll be able to actually go live. But yeah, no problem, man. If it's something quick, like I said, I only have, I'm about to finish this break in like 10 minutes. I only have Obsidian Basketball that's sold out, and then after that, I'm free. It could be a group break, it could be a personal, whatever you guys want. So, yeah, no worries, man. But tomorrow, like I said, I, we should have more people in tomorrow. So, if I'm here covering again tomorrow, then we'll have someone cover for IG. So, it was just like today was kind of a, kind of just like a weirder day. Yeah, no problem, man. So, there's a schedule that drops. I don't know if you've seen it. It says Nightbot Filler Plus Schedule. If you click that Google Doc, that'll unlock it. Uh, open up a schedule for you and then you can kind of see the time frames of what what's up next and what's what and then like i said if you buy something i can squeeze it in in between a break or after a break really quick Aaron ashby and that goes for anybody of course i know Marin and nigga i think posted up on instagram earlier in stories and posts but obviously some people don't, don't always look at that That's what the Royals are too, can't let her what, what are the Royals channels on and what well, they don't have a contract either with the the cable provider? Yeah, dude, I remember like when Spectrum, you know, got Dodgers and Lakers. I remember Dodgers, I think, were first. Right? There was like a petition for like Direct TV to have Dodgers on their channel and I don't think they got enough traction and enough complaints. So they never brought it back, right? Until they worked out a deal with, with Spectrum. But the minute the Lakers went Spectrum and they went off for like two, three days. I remember this. They went off for like two, three days because DirecTV couldn't come up with a, an agreement. I swear like two days later, DirecTV brought back the Lakers like that. They didn't do the Dodgers, but they brought back the Lakers. I was like, man, that just goes to show you, man. People here in LA love their Lakers. And most people here in LA do have DirecTV or Spectrum, so... I just remember I was like, damn, dude, not enough Dodger fans were complaining about that. I know a lot of people that actually just switched from DirecTV to Spectrum just to have that and then, like, the Pac-12 network. I don't think DirecTV still in this area has the Pac-12 network. Bobby Dalback. Ow, Bally Sports. Yeah, that's where the Kings play now. Kings and Angels do a ballet sports. 
But, yeah. Well, that's the one thing, Terry. That's why I became an Eagles fan. Because when I grew up here in the 90s, there wasn't really any football teams here, right? They were all gone. So, forced me to venture out. So, yeah, I loved it when there was no teams here. I mean, if the Raiders were playing in the morning, most likely they were showing at least the Raider games. But, yeah, everything else they weren't really showing. But now, for sure, if there's a morning game for one of those guys away or a 1 o'clock game, they're always going to show them. Backstrom. Yeah, Bally's does have their own streaming app. Yeah, I don't... I actually don't pay for that. Uh, my my mom... my Actually, my brother has DirecTV at, at my parents' house, so... Um, I just log into his DirecTV account under Bally, so I don't have to pay for it. But yeah, no. I'm sure all those streaming softwares are probably expensive, too. The only... Pl I mean, I pay for a lot of different ones, honestly, but... The only ones I definitely use and pay for is definitely Netflix, Hulu... Disney, and then I have like the, the Disney bundle, so it's like Disney, Hulu, and ESPN Plus. So that's like what, 10 15 dollars, whatever it is. And then, like, I piggyback off my sister, like, I have Amazon Prime, so my sisters, like, my sister in law and my sister use Amazon under my account, so then I piggyback off them, like, with like, you know, um, Paramount TV or something. Yeah, it's going to blow in two years, Mac, but honestly, either Pac-12 will get some people to come, or like I said, Oregon is just going to leave. Oregon and Washington will leave. It's just going to be so weird, though, dude, like USC and UCLA here in Southern California playing against all those teams in the Big Ten that literally are going to be like cold as hell and snowing. I don't think those guys are used to that, all those LA people here. And Matt Frazier to four ninety nine. I think they realigned in twenty twenty four. So this year and next year, it'll still be Pac twelve. So they got a couple of years basically. Well, that's the one thing they were talking about on ESPN today. Technically, yeah, that's the funny thing. Jilo, uh, Pac twelve is looking to get a new TV deal. Um, but they were talking about Notre Dame, actually, because Notre Dame, honestly, they don't really need to do anything, right? They're perfect the way they are when it comes to football. But it could be an opportunity for a conference to pay big money to have them come to their school. You know, if, if or come not come to their school, but come to the conference. But like they were saying, like, they don't really need to be in a conference. They're, they're good the way they are. Luis Matos. But yeah, it's all about money. But I still love college football, honestly. I think college football is so exciting to watch live. I've been to a lot of Oregon games here downtown and here in L.A. against USC, UCLA, and the Rose Bowl games I've been to. Still haven't caught a game up in Eugene, but I will eventually. But uh, college football is fun. Oregon actually starts this year their first back-to-back -back years playing against Georgia, which should be fun. Yeah, they probably will lose, but, you know, their coach... Obviously, is uh, the former defensive coordinator for Georgia, so it should be fun. Great recruiter as well. And we have Federico Polanco. Controversy, Joe Pizzo. What are you trying to, what are you trying to stir up here, huh?
Jordan Lawler. All right, last box here, folks. Good luck. I know either either Joe's gonna spill some very very juicy news or or uh, it's gonna be like Rex's news from Fox News. Oh, well, I guess that is kind of a juicy, controversial news, right? But not, I was thinking it was going to be like a Shohei or Mike Trout or somebody bigger, but, uh, Ronier Quintero for the Cubs. But what's going on? So you're saying Austin Meadows and Randy Rosarena, that is 100% not their autograph and both signed by the same player. Like every single one of them? Like every single one, I haven't seen, I haven't pulled one yet, so I don't know. Are they trying to say that they got out of it from signing and they just like, that just happened? I know, right? I'm just messing with you, Rex. Because <laughs> we all know it's fake. Hmm. Did you start this uh, controversy? <laughs> or is that everywhere? <laughs> yes, I'm trying to say, like, if it's something that you've only seen, so I'm like, okay, Joby might be onto something, but is it really a controversy? <laughs> uh, uh, Joe's just trying to be the first on the first on scoop. Take credit. Off all the blowout forms that are about to happen. <laughs> I believe you, I believe you. <laughs> you can send it to me though. Joe Pizzle don't speak lies, he speaks only facts. Alan Serta. Well, that's the whole point, Rex. I mean, you do comparisons, right? I mean... All right, so on top of this, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And now, actually, that buyback one of Justin Morneau is really cool, out of six. So appreciate you guys. That was the break. That was the random division number three that we've done here. I, th I think we do have more cases. I don't think I have I got any chance to post up another one, but if I if it's not posted up yet, I will post up another one. I think we have enough for another one or two. So, appreciate it, guys. Jaspies, casebreaks.com.